Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we are going to discuss constructor and the member initializer list. We are going to use preview video's example, the class, simple class, MySquare. That class, we have a D4 constructor. We have two methods. And the members is called a integer side, and uh, we have a one method called a set side, which receives the integer, and uh, to set the side member side equal the integer we received. There's other methods that get area, which return the area of square, which is side times side. So look at the main program we used last uh, preview video. We instantialize our object. Called my SQR, we call our method set side. It's means give number is ten, and when we call our method gate area to print out the area of square. We also we then we set up the using set up side method to set up the side equals fifteen, and then we call the gate area to get the area of the square area of 15 and uh, using gate area method. So let's run this. So you can see the output is the square area of 10 is 100, square area of 15 is 225. So here the square of area of 10 is gate area. Square area of 15 after we reset up the 15 is get area. So now let's go back to the mysquare.cpp. This is uh, our default constructor. And uh, inside the body of the default constructor, we put a side equal zero, which initializing of uh, our member side. This is a classical way we write a default constructor. In the modern C++, there's another way to write. It's called the side. And then we get rid of this one. So now we can put everything in one line. This is our default constructor. And this part is initializing our member side with zero. So this part we are going called the initializer. And this part is the body of a default constructor. We still can write in something inside inside this current bracket, but in general we don't do anything. We just set up the initial initialize the value of side. So this way and all the way writing is different but the way of how it works exactly the same. So let's go back to the our main CPP. Let's try to run this again. You can see the way is working exactly the same, but uh, just the writing is different way. Sometimes maybe people say you're writing this way, thinking you're more expert, and you're writing other way, thinking you're my beginner, but. Uh, Actually, it doesn't matter. So now we come back to the main. So this way, we start initial instantialize our object, and then we set up the side value. So we need a two line. Is there possible we just uh, during the instantialization we just initialize our member with the value which we already know? of this line. So you can see if we put the value here and this is a no matching constructor for initialization. So it means we don't have a match constructor. How do we do? So we can create one match constructor. So the match constructor should be receiving able to receive an integer. So let's see here the default constructor don't receive anything, don't have any parameter, so we need to create a constructor which 
receive integer. After we declare this, let's go back to main. You can see the error is gone. So now we have to go to my square CPP. We have to write this is for the constructor we save integer i. We are going to in initialize the member with i. So let's go back to the inner. Let's uh, be clear. Get rid of this line. So now we instantialize the object with the integer 10, exactly one line, it working same as previous. We need a two line. Now let's run. You can see the result exactly the same. So now let's uh, see if we put a, a float here, what happened? You can see we got a warning, implicit conversion from float to integer. So it means for our constructor, we don't have a float input constructor. We only have a default constructor and the integer constructor. So if we get the float number here, it, uh, in this case, they don't, we don't get error. We just get a warning. It means the constructor will find the most similar one to convert, which means in this case to convert a float to integer. So let's run to see what happened. It's they say program is working, but the 10.5 here has been converted as 10, and that's so when we got the area of 100. So it means it's a it's if we consider this as an error. Okay, it means if we can. We don't want our object to receive float. We only want an integer. So what uh, we can do, we can block this. How we do? We go to our header file. We declare, make another one, which is more similar with if we got a float which if we don't want this happen, we think this is error, we don't want this happen, we can put here to de delete. It means once it come to this constructor, we just delete this. So in this case, you can see the warning became error, which means call to delete constructor. So it means if we give the input like this way, it's not going to happen, we just call to delete. So we cannot instantialize object. So we can only accept integer. Or we can use a default constructor. So hello, this is Hui. In this video, we demonstrate how to create a match constructor and how to create a block constructor, which in certain case, if we don't want it to happen, we can use it this way to block this. So, Hello, this is Hui. Thanks for watching my video. Hopefully it's enjoy. It's going to be great to have your feedback.